Hi, this is Mike Maloney. And there have been quite a few stories recently on how the country will be roughly $20 trillion in debt when Obama leaves office. And what I find interesting about that is more than five years ago, I gave a presentation titled Debt Collapse, The Case for $20,000 Gold. And in there, I said that because of our debt-based monetary system, our fiat currency system, where there is the principal plus interest due on every dollar in existence. In other words, the dollars that exist today are all owed back plus interest, and the currency to pay the interest does not exist yet. We have to borrow that in the future. Because of that, in order to maintain our current levels of prosperity, we have to be twice as deep in debt when Obama leaves office as when he came in. So let's see how I did with that. Here is the federal debt, total public debt. So this is the amount the public owes that the government borrowed for us and spent on us. And when Obama came into office, it was 10 or 11 trillion, and now it's at 19.381 trillion. So by the time he leaves office, it pretty much will have doubled, very, very close to that. Now, a lot of economists will take a look at the level of debt to GDP, so the, the size of the debt compared to the size of the economy. And this chart goes back to 1940, and what you see here is this explosion of debt during World War II. And we ended up where the debt was almost 120% of the economy, so 20% greater than the size of all the products and services bought and sold in the United States during a period of a year. And then we, we slowly were able to not pay down the debt. The debt always grew, but we grew the economy at a much faster rate than we were growing the debt. And then we went off the gold standard back in 71. And then in the 1980s, during the Reagan administration, we decided that deficits don't matter. And we started spending a lot more than our income. You know, this isn't a Republican or a Democratic thing. It's just that ever since the 1980s, we are not able to live within our means. Government always wants to spend more than their income. And we've not been able to grow the economy faster than we grow the debt. We always spend at an increasing rate that is greater than we grow the economy at. But here with the real estate collapse in 2007 and 2008, what you see is this huge rise. And that is massive deficit spending, but it is also a contraction of GDP, which hadn't happened during this period. GDP never shrank during this period here. The last time it shrank was during the Great Depression. So you have this huge contraction of GDP and enormous deficit spending. And so here we are at 100% of GDP. Now this chart is annual data. If you look up here, it says frequency annual. I have a chart that's updated quarterly, except that chart only goes back to 1980. So I love the historic perspective, being able to look at very, very long time frames, because I wouldn't be able to show you this if I was looking at that shorter time frame, and then to compare it to some other things. Now, the problem with trying to do this again, trying to grow the economy at a faster rate than we are growing our debt, coming out of the Great Depression, individuals were very, very debt averse. You can see here, there's, there's something that's called the Kondratyev wave, and this reflects the seasons. This is when Kondratyev autumn actually started, this growth of, this is the whole 80s, 90s, 2000s, was an economic boom brought on by debt, and you can see that when we go to total credit to private non-financial sector. So this is the consumer and corporations. It's just not the banks. So the banks aren't included in this. So this is the debt that they're taking on as a percentage of the economy. And you can see here that back in 1952, it was at 53%. And if you go back into the 30s, this is probably down at 25, maybe 30% at, at most. 
So people were very debt averse. If you go back to the end of World War II, I would bet that that the individual debt and corporate debt was somewhere on the order of 30%, maybe 35%. And then we grow, and, and then this is the Kondratiev summer. We'll go over the Kondratiev wave sometime in the future. This is spring. And in spring, you're coming out of low levels of debt, and you're building infrastructure. You're building factories and, and equipment, and that's what, what, how the economy is growing. And then when you get into the Kondratiev autumn, it's a debt-driven boom. And so here we are. Back in 2008, we were at 168% of GDP. So the private sector, corporations and, and individuals, owed 168% the size of the economy. Today, we're down at 150%, but still, it means that with the next crisis, trying to get down from these levels of debt that we're at is going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible. Because what's really important here, actually, more than debt to GDP, is the federal debt compared to federal government receipts. So it's not how big the economy is. In other words, if you're a business, it isn't how what what your gross is, how much you're selling. It's what your profits are that determine the ability to pay your debt. And so the current receipts is the government's income, and the debt is how much the government, you and I basically, owe. And you can see We go into World War II and come out of it, and the amount of tax receipts is growing at a greater rate than we are getting in debt. So our ability to pay off the debt is going from where the debt was seven and a half times greater than our ability to pay, and down in 1981, it was only one, the debt was 1.6 times the government's income. And now it's back up at 5.2. But notice again this very, very large step that happens during the recession of 2008, the global financial crisis, 2008, 2009. And we ended up at just about six times the level of debt compared to the income. And again, this is because of GDP contraction, and that caused tax revenues and other receipts that the government takes in to contract, making this ratio explode up into the fives. So we've got another recession coming soon. I believe we have already started it. And this is going to explode again. And we'll be back up higher than levels during World War II and having that to pay off. But what is the difference? We had this huge baby boom here and we were growing the economy very quickly because the econ- we started with extremely low levels of debt, where it was just 25% the size of the economy. And now we're going to be trying to do the same thing with the debt at 150% the size of the economy. The, the debt is 5.2 times the size of our income and If the income shrinks in the next recession, it's going to explode. It'll be up at seven, eight, nine, ten times the income. And then the ability to grow the economy with all the high levels of private debt is going to be very low. So that's my take on things. I think this uh, next recession is going to be a doozy. This is the reason that it is going to be an even greater crisis than the implosion of all the mortgage-backed securities back in 2008. It's because we're not going to be able to dig ourselves out of this hole. Actually, there's a reverse side to this. There is great opportunity in every crisis, and it's up to you to find out what that is. So thank you very much for listening. If you got anything from this, Please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks.